in the first wave in the last decade fintech was building its own it, it was creating uh, products uh, that are very backbone basic uh, right but yeah. this decade i think fintech is going to be going into other different areas Let's Accelerate kembali hadir bersama saya Yeni Usra dan kali ini kita akan berbincang-bincang dengan CEO Pintar Ventura Group, Vlad Ayukaev. Hi Vlad, apa kabar? How are you? <laughs> hello, hello. Doing great. Uh, just uh, enjoying my time back in okay. Europe for a while. So How are you doing? Dive... I'm fine, I'm fine. Thank you Vlad. Before we dive in into the conversation, maybe you can introduce yourself and what is uh, PVG, <coughs> Pintar Ventura Group? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so PVG is a um, venture studio or a startup builder. I think there are multiple ways to call it, but the concept is the same. So we are uh, putting together um, a lineup of uh, products for B2B okay. um, that revolve around, revolve around digitalization of payments, uh, digitalization of uh, different financial services. Uh, that essentially boost the performance or optimize operations of uh, our um, business uh, customers. Mm-hmm. So, and this is our uh, main focus. So we uh, invest both money, our expertise, and our uh, developers uh, into bringing those products to the market. So, talk to me about the venture studio. Is it the same like venture builder? And what what are what the products that you already <coughs> launched so far? Yep. So Venture Studio, um, uh, it's it's really in between uh, a startup and uh, a venture fund, right? Oh. So venture fund uh, invests with money only. So and uh, startup essentially uh, at the other scale is a company that attracts money to build something, right? Yeah. But Venture Studio is uh, truly in between. Uh, so mm. it builds uh, startups with its own money. Uh, usually, um, a couple of products in the same niche, so and tries to reutilize and reuse this uh, uh, expertise from one project to another. So, okay. and yes, it can be called in uh, different ways. It can in some, in some in some areas of the world, it's it's called a startup studio. Sometimes it's called a venture builder, venture studio, yeah. but it's essentially yeah, the same concept. Okay, so you launch your own product. In this case, is a startup or, or or a platform, right? What kind of mm-hmm. uh, startup category that you are aiming for? Is it fintech? Is it a health mm-hmm. tech? Is it ad tech? Mm-hmm. Yes. So we are mostly uh, predominantly focused uh, on uh, financial services. So right now in our portfolio, we have uh, two products. One is Kliku, which is a bill payment app. Sometimes it's uh, uh, something that is called PPOB in Indonesia. Mm. So um, and our second product uh, is POSI, is an online or cloud cashier. Uh, and our future products, and we're also working on the third one already and have fourth in mind, they're all going to be uh, adjacent to uh, those services. So they're all going to be close to each other, essentially, um, improving lives of merchants uh, that work on Indonesian streets. Yes. <clears throat> so in, uh, it, is, uh, it is interesting that you are targeting into the financial services uh, in Indonesia. Is it something that you think, in, uh, from your point of view, is very sexy mm-hmm. and popular in Indonesia right now, financial? Yes. Because, you know... I, th- I think it's very lucrative okay. uh, because, first, um, Indonesians still use a lot of cash, right? Yeah. And uh, well, as an entrepreneur, um, you see this as an opportunity because if you look at other countries, mm. they already start this uh, transition from cash to uh, non-cash payments, right? It's essentially in like Western Europe and Nordic countries, it's already uh, 80%, 90% uh, digital payments. Yeah. So in Indonesia, cash is still the majority. And uh, it's seen a rapid decline, I think, uh, after the pandemic started, because more and more people turned its eyes uh, onto online payments, right? Mm-hmm. But still, there is this huge gap. And of course, for any business that is trying to digitalize the economy, this is a huge opportunity. So yeah. as uh, people start to using more and more online, online services, more and more money are going to be coming to those services. 
and uh, it's just an opportunity to uh, build some cool stories and uh, make great products. Yeah. So your main two products right now uh, is Kliku and Posi. Each uh, cater yeah. different services, right? The, the the other one is like a POS, and the other one is yep. like an agent, right? That very popular yes. in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Yes. How is how how do you differentiate your two most popular product and also popular product from other platforms to be different? Mm -hmm. What kind of mm -hmm. services that you know you can offer mm -hmm. more than other platforms? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, of course, first, uh, I think the niche that we try to take uh, is a very um, unique. So yeah. we try to approach those small agents, uh, micro owners, right? Oh. And of course, if you look at bigger, uh, bigger uh, fintech companies in Indonesia, yeah. usually they try to serve B2C, right? So most, if you, if you talk about the names, uh, uh, like Ovo, for example, or Dana, right? Uh, uh -huh. Of course, uh, first and, uh, the first and the biggest market that they serve is a B2C market. So, uh, so we try to niche already into by going into this uh, uh, B2B segment, merchant segment, or micro agent, uh, super owner, you can call them whatever you want. So um, then we also look at what type of features do they need? So like how they're usually organized. Mm. Uh, most of our merchants uh, are people who either run their business by themselves or just have one or two um, employees, right? And this makes uh, their processes, the way they conduct their business is quite unique. Uh, you cannot just, you know, copy paste uh, from other markets. You cannot just uh, uh, bring flows, processes that already exist in, let's say, in uh countries where there's not that many merchants uh, to indonesia you have to create your own uh, you have to create your own funnel you have to create your own user flow for those uh super owners and this is what yeah. we do so we try to we we'll look at the, our customer base and we try to um make sure that the product we create has some like worldwide expertise in it mm -hmm. and um uh like builds on our experience, but say essentially we create like a unique funnel for those super owners dealing with their problems. So, and uh, that's that's how our features essentially uh, are created. And um, of course, uh, we overlap a lot with other fintech services, mm -hmm. right? But right now we focus on bringing the cool analytics uh, to those merchants because they want to see like where they're from. Where they don't perform, so we try to build them cool stock control um, and um, uh, optimize stock management. So we don't expect them to be very digitally literate. You know, we don't expect them to have um, uh, a lot of other services products. So uh, one of the cool feature examples I think we have is like preloaded stock. You know, uh, when you when you start using POS, you have to digitalize all your stock. Let's say you, you, you sell Coca-Cola and like oil and uh, some chicken, right? So you have to first put those uh, into the cloud, take pictures, make descriptions, maybe scan barcodes. And of course, we understand that uh, if you're a super owner and you have two, three or 400 uh, uh, items in your store, that will take you quite a while to um, uh, put them online. So what we do, uh, we offer them a, a preloaded stock consisting of the most popular product in Indonesia. So they, they save this time. Of course, sometimes they have to add something manually, but already like those 50, 70, 100 preloaded stocks will let them start right away. So this is the type of features that we're talking about. So they're really tiny, you know, small, right? Um, maybe from first glance, it looks that it's not important, but if you look at, uh, at the super owner and the small merchant life, like what makes them accept this technology uh, I think those are essential because without those um, small features that make their life easier from the beginning, that let them uh, easily start using your product, I think uh, uh, this propagation of uh, um, uh, digital services will be slower. <laughs> so yeah, and and same for same for Kliku. Even though it's a it's a quite a uh, old concept, uh, which has been already for 
couple of years around in Indonesia. I think we try to bring new models there. Uh, mm -hmm. First, we, we launched Kliku Premium, um, uh, which is not only, so usually like DPOB services are based on transaction fee, right? Merchants do some transactions and then you take like a small a couple hundred rupiah out of this, and this is your profit. But we also launched a, a second model where you can you can pay premium subscription, monthly subscription, but then all the stuff is going to be discounted for you. So essentially, there are some products where we don't make money. We just uh, um, give our merchants the best price possible on the market, the price that we get from our uh, our partners. So, yeah. Okay. So do you, do you think there's still enough pie for you to cater this kind of services? Because like I said earlier, that mm -hmm. this kind of product already available in yes. Indonesia with so mm -hmm. much variety. What is your mm -hmm. strategy mm -hmm. to acquire <coughs> yes. new merchants to use of course. products? If you look, if you look at um, Jakarta or uh, maybe Denpasar or Surabaya and other big, bigger cities, then um, you're absolutely right. The... the uh, market is tensed, right? Yes. Uh, I think it's not as dense for POS devices. For POS, oh, even okay. in Jakarta, we see a lot of merchants that um, that don't use any type of uh, POS right now. Okay. But uh, for PPUB, of course, if you visit agents, uh, they already have some sort of a app available. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, there are two strategies that we try to utilize here. The first strategy is we try to go into tier two, tier three cities oh. um, uh, that are a way of like uh, million, million city millionaires, right? Uh, the bigger ones. So, and we try to serve uh, our customers there. And of course there is way less competition because for now, like big Indonesian uh, fintechs are still focused, I think on large cities. Yeah. And uh, if you travel uh, 1700 kilometers away from Jakarta, and then uh, you will find merchants that are not yet served by any any digital uh, platform. Okay. For us, yes, as I said, it's easier. And even in Jakarta, there is market. So there are still most of the merchants still don't use any any type of uh, POS devices. So I think the market is huge there. Mm -hmm. So what is your target uh, in in terms of PVG target? Uh, until the end mm -hmm. of this year, is there any mm -hmm. new product that you will launch next year, or you will only focus on de uh, developing these two uh, your mm -hmm. uh, your mm -hmm. popular products? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is there is one. Um, well, first uh, year end is soon, <laughs> but uh, uh, it's, it's December is almost months. there, right? In, in terms <laughs> yeah, of yeah. business, yes, there is not that much you can do. Yeah. But uh, yes, there is one pro project a product that we are uh, crafting for the market right now. Okay. It's a totally it's a totally different um, uh, segment for us. Oh. So it is it is a web free connected project. So it's a um, uh, it's a cold wallet for storing your crypto assets. Ooh. So uh, yes, it, it just it's it just um, popped out out of a small hypothesis that we have in our team, and okay. we decided to explore it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's gonna be very special in our portfolio because it is not uh, directly involved with B two B merchants or payments, right? It's just it's just a small um, it's just a small uh, storage that is not connected to the internet, uh, so you can keep it uh, in your wallet, and if you lose it you lose your money, right? So it's not like a exchange or um, online wallet. So it's just, just a mechanical, uh, something what Ledger or Trezor is, are doing. So that's, that's, that's our small pet project that we are uh, about to launch. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, we're not gonna have any, any new uh, B2B oriented project this year, but I think Early next year, uh, we're probably going to be coming back with something cool. So we already have it in mind, but uh, I, 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 won't, I won't share it at the moment. <laughs> okay. So uh, yeah. last question, Vlad. Uh, what do you think about mm -hmm. next wave for financial services ecosystem? <coughs> do you find mm -hmm. there's a new, probably up and coming mm -hmm. category or startups or uh, opportunities mm -hmm. for financial services, mm -hmm. or is still mm -hmm. the same? But probably more no. into what, what do you think about what is your take on yeah. that? Yeah, I, I think actually right now, um, 
we went for the first wave mm. uh, of uh, fintech services. Like, yeah. if you look back, I don't know, maybe five or seven years ago, um, like e money, uh, uh, like different types of payments, maybe yeah. um, credit companies, P two P companies, right? Uh, and even the PPOB, they were not there yet. So they were just yeah. essentially launching and getting the track. Now all basic stuff, I think, is solved. Yeah. Uh, like um, all your most important, uh, let me say, um, uh, most frequent challenges uh, that you experience as a user in everyday life are solved. So you can easily register um, e-money account. You can go to a bank, open a bank account, right? You can, if you want to send money, you can use one of the remittance companies to send money. Yeah. So um, there are, if, if you need, a, if you want to take like a loan or any any other s terms of like pay later assisted uh financial services or a bunch of those companies too so i think this, the most basic stuff is solved right so now it's this probably yeah. second wave uh of financial services and from my opinion they're going to be focused uh on two different things first okay. i think in b2b there is a lot of <clears throat> opportunity because um uh, the first wave was mostly focused on B2C, yeah. right? But for B2B, for uh, services that um, uh, cater the relationship between different companies, different mm -hmm. merchants, like let's say invoicing, for example. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, you're an entrepreneur, yeah. right? We have, we have businesses and for, you want to invoice me for some product and service. Right now, you still have to do it uh, uh, physically, right? Yeah. You still have to print something, like sign a, sign a contract and then send it and then put a stamp on it, uh, materialize. So I think this is going to be changing and uh, those relationships between merchants are going to be digitized. And I think that's a lot, uh, a lot of the stuff to be done this opportunity. We're talking about invoicing, accounting, uh, contracts, digital signatures, uh, all the services are also right fintech, and uh, they are enabling uh, financial stuff. So then, if we're talking about B two C, so now we have this a lot of uh, fintech. I'm not sure exactly, but I think there are over 400 registered financial services in Indonesia, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so now they all have a lot of different products, a lot of different uh, features, and uh, right now probably is a good time to build um, APIs or let me say invisible backbone um, in between those companies to um, build um, a combination of products or uh, maybe uh, um, white labels solutions right oh. uh, so what i'm talking about is essentially build, building something that is called like open bank api back in europe for example right so making those products that big services already made accessible for smaller companies and then uh, uh, maybe um, making some weird uh, but cool combinations of products uh, together from, uh, for example, two different companies um, you know, by util utilizing connections between them and their APIs. So, and of course, uh, now there are a lot of opportunity in serving uh, digital merchants and digital customers in yeah. regards to the like marketplaces. So. Uh, if you're building something for Tokopedia merchants uh, or uh, users that buy stuff from marketplaces or from Shopee uh, or from Lazada, I think right now is is the right time to build there because yeah. a lot of merchants are still also TikTok TikTok shop is really or on the rise also TikTok right shop now. yes 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 <laughs> and those those uh, um, uh, those merchants and those uh, marketplace customers they need they still need some uh fintech services um uh, yeah. to uh, support their business and their lifestyle so i think that's th those are the main areas where we're gonna see stuff so first uh is of course b2b second is uh, um integrating uh different services together and making yeah. a new ones yeah. out of this and then the third one is everything that revolves around marketplaces and uh, merchants and customers there yeah so e-commerce <laughs> the new star founders can take note if they want to create something to enable yeah. the fintech solution right because mm -hmm. the, the, the point the, the the point that you mentioned is really made sense right now right 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, 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 and I think if you, if, you, for that also, right? if you want to think about it very general, so okay. in the first wave, in the last decade, FinTech was building its own. Yeah. It, it was creating uh, products uh, that are very backbone basic, uh, right? But yeah. this decade, I think FinTech is going to be going into other different areas and making yeah. products based on their financial services for other um, verticals. Let's say, for example, HR, I think yeah. is one of the cool verticals that I truly believe. Yeah. And in HR, there is this concept, uh, early wage access, right? Mm -hmm. When you work and you want to ask for advanced payment, yeah. for example. Yeah. And this type of service, is it HR or FinTech? Actually, yeah. it's both. Right, fintech enables uh, employers mm -hmm. uh, to do advanced payment digitally online. Keep track, keep record of it. Keep track of the employee salary. Uh, but also, it's an HR because yes. if your uh, employees can get advanced payments, they're happy. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's that's what that's what we're talking about. So, the next wave of services is going to be this fintech going into um, other other techs, other uh verticals and enabling digital transactions there yep very very interesting and i can see uh, what you're trying to say here and i think it's going to happen very soon right Flash? yes yes probably <laughs> probably the next year between and other and other categories yeah. so fintech is the one yeah. enabling them right yeah Yep. Interesting. Thank you so much, Vlad. I know I can get good insight for, from you based on your experience. And hopefully I can get more updates about PPG and other services that you're planning or, or features you're planning to launch very soon. So congrats. Thank you, Yanni. And yes. Hopefully you can we'll send stay in touch. More updates. Okay. Thank you Thank so much, you. Vlad. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yep.